Hey, what's up, guys? Um, today we're going to talk about turning double plays from the second base position. So, talking about the footwork. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can turn it, and there's a bunch of different situations that will call for different footwork. So, we're going to go over the possibilities, what you can do, when you should do which, uh, and so on. So, for the first one, we're looking at um, let's look at footwork for the first possibility, and that will be coming across the bag. You can come across the bag in a bunch of different ways. Um, as a second baseman, I like to come across the bag when it's a ground ball to a shortstop and he's going to do an underhand flip because it's very easy for, as an underhand flip to put the ball where the shortstop wants it. And for me, coming across the bag and getting some good momentum going towards first base is my easiest turn. So I'll get with my shortstop and we'll kind of discuss where I like it. Uh, when he gets a ground ball hit right at him that he's going to underhand flip it, he knows that I want to come across the bag and he's going to put the ball where I want it. I also like to come across the bag uh, on ground balls to third base. So if it's a ground ball to third base, typically I'm going to come across more than I don't. You you want to mix it up, especially at higher levels, you want to mix it up between going across or using the bag as protection or moving backwards uh, because the runners, if they know what you're going to do, well, they'll start to try to take you out and slide in that direction. But the reason I like to come across when the balls hit the third base is I get to it a little bit quicker. It's a longer distance from third to second than it is from short to second. So it's a, a longer distance. I want to cut that down, get the ball quickly, and get out of my hand. So let's move into um, the type of footwork you'll use if you're coming across the bag. The first thing is I like to get there as early as I can. You want to keep rhythm in your feet so you don't want to get flat-footed. But you want to get to the bag as fast as you can. In this example, it's a hard hit ground ball, so Robinson Cano doesn't get there as soon as he'd like. But he gets there um, just in time. He's got good rhythm coming across the bag. But the first important thing is you want to get your left foot on the bag when you're catching the ball. Always have your left foot and you just basically will take your right foot to wherever the throw is. And this is a nice simple feed because it's pretty close to the bag so Cano doesn't have to really go anywhere. The ball is right on the bag. But all of your feeds aren't going to be perfect so what you want to do is use the left foot to get on the bag and you're going to get on that back part of the bag uh, away from the runner to give yourself some room and you're just going to take your right foot to wherever the ball's thrown on this one he's coming across the bag so he's got his left foot on the bag he's going to come across make sure that it's important at higher levels especially uh, once you get the professional ball because these guys are going to start trying to take you out you want to get out away from the bag no matter where you take it so if you take it in front you can see the distance if you're going to take it back here you want to get back here you don't want to be taking it over the bag and if you're going to drop step backwards you want to be out here a good way to practice this is if you're in practice you can draw a little circle draw a circle around the bag you know give yourself about um, a couple of feet and just catch different throws and make sure you're getting outside that circle it's kind of a good way to practice. So once again, we come across the bag, left foot on it, take our right foot over, make sure we clear a path. And this is a really easy one. You can see all the room he has, runner sliding into second. And if this runner had known he was going to come across the bag, if you do it too much, well then he would have slid out here and made it more difficult. But because he didn't, he slides straight in the bag. Cano is able to easily step out of the way, clear himself, and get rid of the throw. So that's the first way we're going to look at. Let's move on to the second. Now here's another possibility that you can do. We already talked about coming across the bag. Now we can use the bag as protection and get out here so that the base runner, typically they won't slide very hard over the bag. And if they do, well, if you're out here, they're not going to be able to really get out there that far, and you should be able to clear yourself and make a nice throw. This is a, just another possibility. Um, we're going to use this one. If the ball takes us this way, we're just going to get on the bag with our left foot and take our right foot to the ball, which is what happens here. You can see Jed Lowry feels the ball a little bit further away than Derek Jeter. Jeter was in here, 
and him and Cano work together, they know that on a ball in here, Jeter's going to be able to make a nice toss right to where Cano can come across the bag. Here, we're getting far away. We don't know where the throw is going to be. So we got to get on the bag with our left foot, keep our feet moving, and we're going to take our right foot to wherever the throw goes. If we watch here, it's an underhand flip, but it's pretty far away, and you can see the ball is a little bit down and behind the bag. And you see, you just take your right foot, your left foot's on the bag, take your right foot to the ball, which is right here, outside. And now this is going to give us that room and clearance so that we don't get taken out. But we can get the throw off. So once again, we'll back up. Left foot on the bag, right foot to the ball. Catch with two hands. Now we're just going to remove our left foot make a strong throw now this play right here requires a little bit more arm strength so if you're at a younger level um, little league even 13 14 15 years old first time to the big diamond you might not have the arm strength to be able to simply this is a, this is a lot of arm right here so there's not a whole lot of body to help you out it's basically all arm strength you might not be strong enough to do this just yet so you can stick with coming across the bag and using your momentum. If the ball is thrown back here, well, this is pretty much your only option. You're going to have to use it. And you'll see that it'll be a little tougher to get the throw off. But as you get older, more experienced around the bag, uh, you'll be able to get this throw off better. The last example... And uh, before I go on, actually, there's a bunch of different varying degrees to this. There's really not just three. It's not just over, back, and this way. It's basically wherever the ball take you. Sometimes you'll be coming out this way. Sometimes you might have to back up this way. It's important to get on the bag and just take your right foot to the ball at all times. But the last main way would be if you're a guy that comes across the bag like we saw Cano do earlier, well, then every now and then you don't want to come across it. If you get a good throw that you can handle, well, then you just take a little drop step with your left foot. Wait, excuse me, with your right foot. So you get the left foot on the bag, you're going to drop back with your right foot and throw. And again, this is more used when you get into professional baseball. When the other team, the guy on first, might know that you're a guy that comes across the bag all the time, well, he's going to come inside and he's going to be sliding in here to take you out. That's when you are going to mix it up every now and then and take a drop step with your right foot and you're going to clear the bag this way the same way you would here make sure you get outside that little circle that i was talking about that we can draw make sure you get out there so that the base runner won't be able to get out and take you out and you'll have a clear path for a throw to first base so those are the ways to do it uh, the most important things to remember are one to get to the bag early and get your left foot on the bag but keep your feet moving the second thing is to not always anticipate that you're going to get a perfect throw, but you have to expect that this throw could be anywhere, and you're just going to take your right foot, and no matter where the ball is, you're going to take your right foot to the ball. That's going to make it easiest for you. And the last thing is make sure that when you're making this play, you're getting out from the base. Draw that circle around it in practice and work on getting outside. No matter which direction you move, you don't want to be over the bag. You would be surprised at how many injuries can happen from a guy sliding in. Your foot might be caught in the dirt and you're taken out and there goes a knee. The last thing I'll say before we finish is you don't really see it in these examples because the camera leaves, but... After you throw the ball, just be sure to get up off your feet. So after you throw here, just take a little jump. It's not meant to jump over the guy. You don't have to jump over him. But it, what it is meant to do is get your, your foot from out of the ground. Because if your foot is planted and this guy comes in here and hits your leg, well, then your knee could easily be torn and you could be seriously injured. As long as you jump and get this foot off the ground, well, if it hits you in the leg, nothing's planted in the ground. Yeah, you might get a bruise on your shin, but your knee's going to be fine, and you won't have any serious injuries. So it's important to get up after you throw and make sure in practice 
Um, just do it every time. When you take a throw, it doesn't have to be a big high jump. You don't have to jump three feet in the air. But you just want to get up off the ground and get used to get in that habit of always getting them up, up off the ground so that you can avoid those, you know, a more serious injury where you might have to miss a year of time for something that you could have easily prevented. So that's how you use your feet around the bag. I hope that helped. Um, next time we're going to look over at shortstop and see how shortstops can improve their footwork around the bag. All right, guys, try this. I hope it works. We'll see you later.